Hey, I'm Brittany Smith, and I'm a new student specialist here at Montana State University Billings. And I'm Shai Robinson, and I'm a new student marketing specialist here at MSU Billings, and we're so excited to welcome you to our first career cafe. Um, so we are going to be doing these career cafes on Tuesdays and Thursdays throughout the month of November and just in the beginning of December, um, covering different programs and areas of study that you can pursue here at MSU Billings. So grab a coffee. If you're joining us on Conduit, we'll be sending you a gift card to pick up a coffee for yourself. Um, but enjoy today. We're going to be talking about social sciences here at MSU Billings. So I'll start off and open us up a little bit, tell you a little bit more about MSU Billings. So we were founded in 1927. We're located here in Billings, Montana. We have five colleges across two campuses, and we have over 4,000 students enrolled in numerous programs. Alrighty, um, and here at MSU Billings, our faculty to student ratio is actually 1 to 14 with class sizes around 23, which means that you really get to know the faculty you're working with um, as well as your classmates, especially when you get into those upper division classes, it's going to be probably even smaller than those numbers, um, which is amazing. Additionally, uh, if you have a question in one of your classes, 88% of our faculty hold the highest degree in their field, so you're going to be talking with an expert. None of our classes are taught by graduate assistants, so something really unique about our university. So speaking of questions, if you're in Conduit, you'll want to make sure that you click on the little, um, it's like a chat bubble icon, and that will open up a chat, and you can speak with one of our specialists. They may not be faculty, but they know what they're talking about. <laughs> and then if you're watching on YouTube, you're welcome to chat in the comments box as well. Um, but back to MSU Billings, um, some quick facts. Uh, we have two residence halls, Rimrock and Petro Hall. Um, we have 50, over 50 clubs and organizations here across both of our campuses. We uh, sponsor 16 NCAA Division II athletic programs um, and then we also have intramural sports and recreational activities that you're free to participate in and they kind of like change based on the season. So we have ultimate frisbee and perhaps even ultimate ping pong just based on the location of where the ping pong table <laughs> is and just some tons of activities and ways to get involved outside of um, the classroom. Alrighty, and as I mentioned today, we're going to be focusing on our social sciences programs. However, just so you're aware, um, we do have five academic colleges here at MSU Billings, and we'll be talking about um, different programs within each of these over the next few weeks, but we do have the College of Business, College of Education, College of Health Professions and Sciences, College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, and our City College as well. So today we are covering the College of Liberal Arts and Social Science, and so that includes uh, art and music and history and English and environmental studies and criminal justice and sociology and psychology. Um, but we're gonna hop to a video now, um, which is me with a slightly different hairstyle, different dress, it was a different day. Um, same necklace, shocking. Um, but uh, I met with John Roberts, who is our the chair of the music department here at MSU Billings. And we sat down, kind of walked around a little bit and really got to see a little bit more about um, the music department the facilities um, and some of the really cool things that they're doing so stay tuned we've got the video for you now hi it's me again and I'm here with professor John Roberts of the music department and he's gonna talk to us a little bit about what sort of um, opportunities you would have while studying here whether you are in the music program or you're just looking to check some things out so take it away John one of the newest things we have here in the music department is our recently rebuilt uh, music studio, which is open to faculty and students alike to use, and we are, are already creating music to release, and some singles, and students have been using it, and uh, um, we just got our new, our, our new rack of music modules here, it's everything set up, and um, the studio has a great sound. Over here we have a... $70,000 Beckstein piano for use in the studio. A lot of nice microphones to choose from, nice vocal booth. So there's everything in this studio you could use to make a full length professional album and make it sound as good a quality as anything out there on the internet. And we're gonna check out the um, auditorium as well just to see the recital hall where some of our students are performing. So you wanna yeah. lead the way? Yeah, you bet. So this is the recital hall, and this is used by students for their own recitals, uh, their junior and senior recitals, as well as student recitals every week. This is also 
every semester where the jazz band performs, the concert choir, the symphonic band, the brass quintet, the soul band, the Latin band, um, any ensembles that perform in the music department usually perform in this room and students can use it for their own purposes too. It's one of the best sounding acoustic rooms in the state, definitely in Billings and a lot of a lot of uh, out of town people and, and local groups also use this for their own performances. We have really nice pianos, a Beckstein and a Steinway to use, and uh, we have sound system, we have recording capabilities, and so it's a very multi-use room and it has a great acoustic sound, especially for vocalists, guitarists, violinists, and brass players. Perfect, thank you so much. Okay. Back to you, Kristen. All righty. <laughs> There we go, technical difficulties. Um, so yes, music department, um, very active on our campus. Just recently, um, when it was a little warmer out, the jazz, I believe, ensemble was so, yeah. outside performing, actually like out on the lawn, and you could hear them all across campus. Um, there was a time when it seemed like we were getting a lot of phone calls, but um, the chorale was performing in our lobby of McMullen <laughs> because it is so acoustically beautiful. But yeah, it might not been, might not have been the best time, but it was really enjoyable for those of us that weren't answering the calls at the front desk. Uh, very active on our on our campus. Um, so another department that we have here at MSU Billings that we wanted to highlight today um, was the history department. And the history department is near and dear to my heart because I was a history minor here at MSU Billings. Um, so I had the chance to sit down with Dr. Jen Lin and just kind of talk about the program and some of the pieces there. So here is me talking to Jen Lin the other day. Alrighty, hi everyone, uh, it's Shiloh with New Student Services and today I'm talking with Dr. Jen Lin. She's one of our history professors. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Good. Um, so to start with, uh, what are some of the classes that we offer here in the history department? So the Department of History offers a wide range of classes, um, everything from um, introductory courses uh, to upper division courses mm -hmm. in areas of American history, um, you get to take classes like America in Crisis or America and the Civil War. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take ancient and medieval classes. We even have a class on archaeology where you can go do a dig uh, somewhere in Montana. Um, we have modern Europe courses, um, everything from the history of punk to the history of monsters. Um, we have modern Latin American courses. Um, and we also have a wide range of thematic classes, including courses on women's and gender history. Wow, so a lot of options there. Yes. What skills, if you were a history major, would you develop in these classes? Well, you get all the skills as a <laughs> history major. Um, historians and uh, history students focus on uh, good historical thinking, um, really strenuous argumentation with lots of supporting evidence, uh, writing skills and critical thinking skills. So these are all things that can apply to any job, any field in the future. Okay, perfect. So what are some of our recent graduates gone on to do then with their degrees? That is a great question and a question that a lot of students ask, what can I do with a history mm -hmm. degree? Um, so some of our students uh, do history teaching, so okay. um, secondary education um, or go on to grad school. Um, but many of our students have also worked in public history in museums and archive work in library science. Mm -hmm. Um, history is also a great uh, start for pre-law. Um, we read a lot and you learn how to read a lot <laughs> as you would do in law school. Um, our, his our history students have also worked in nonprofits. Um, for example, every national park has its own historian, so you can wow. work um, in a wide range of fields. Um, and we had one student has a really cool job. She's actually an archivist for Reebok, wow. so she archives. Um, Kind of like company company files so there's all kinds of cool things that you can do with a history degree and make money and have a <laughs> career so awesome well thank you so much for sharing all of that today we really appreciate it you're welcome hope to see you soon awesome I love that. I think sometimes people talk about history as a program and some of these like liberal arts and social sciences and that's the concern is like making money and so I love that Dr. Lynn threw that in at the end of opportunities for archivalists and things like that, that it doesn't just have to be, you know, going into education or just keep going to school. There's plenty of opportunities um, within the social sciences. So Shai, I know you 
minored in history, what was something that like, I don't know, that has really shaped even what you're doing now or continues to be of interest to you? Yeah, um, so definitely when she stressed the skills that you develop in those classes, um, my writing changed a lot because I was a history major and I'm a grad student right now, so I am going to school but also working. Um, and definitely having those classes where you had to research and do all that has helped me greatly in my job. I'm researching different things that we can bring in, but also in grad school, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, the history department here is very close knit. Like they gather a lot outside of classes and you really get to know your peers. Like they have like a graduation gathering each year for their graduates and then like a fall get together so everyone can meet each other. So very close knit community here on our campus. And I think that's true of a lot of our different groups on campus. So my yeah. experience is Cool. Well, I know that it's really helpful to see some of these, especially like in companionship with education. That was your program. And so a lot of students will um, take some of these classes and go into like uh, music teaching or history teaching or art teaching, which brings us to our next video, which is an interview I had again earlier in the year uh, with Professor Jody Leitner. And she shared a little bit about um, our art program and some of the things that our art students can get up to. Hey everybody, it's me, Brittany, and I'm over here in the art annex with Professor Jody Leitner. And she's gonna talk to us a little bit about what we can do down here. What's What's happening over here? So take it away, Jody. Thank you, Brittany. Welcome to the Art Annex. This is our sculpture studio. It is one of our four areas of emphasis that we have for studio art majors. You can major in painting and drawing, photography and new media, lens-based work. You can um, focus on ceramics as well as sculpture. And this sculpture studio has a lot of equipment that you can get your hands on. Students work with wood, they work with metal. As you can see, our professor Mark Earnhardt is working with some wood in the back right now. I teach painting and drawing, and I come down here with my students so we can build strainers for our paintings, frames, and other equipment. So we all use this space. It's available for all students. So I look forward to seeing all of you in an art class sometime soon. Take it away. Alrighty, um, so that was one of our art professors, as Brittany mentioned. Um, so we actually have kind of the art department on the first floor of the Liberal Arts Building, but then we also have the art annex, which is where sculptor, metalwork, all of that um, comes to play. And that's actually where you were at for that mm -hmm. video. Yeah, I, I knew that we often on our tours, so um, we are doing physical in-person tours, so if you wanted to come and tour our campus, uh, we can show you a little bit more about like the art department that's located in the Liberal Arts Building, um, as well as the gallery that's located here on campus. But because we never really get out to the art annex, I really wanted to um, have an opportunity, like take the opportunity to see what's out there. Partially, I hadn't been out there yet, so I like <laughs> also selfishly wanted to see it. But yeah, no, um, I think, there are a lot of really cool things that they're doing out there. Um, because of sound, we didn't have Mark. Uh, he was in, he was back behind Jody, and he does a lot of the sculpture pieces. And so he, I was like, use the tools, but like don't actually use the tools because all of them make quite a bit of noise out there. But it's just neat to see what students are able to build and create. Um, and so yeah, there's plenty of opportunity for art here on campus. Awesome. And that's actually one of the organizations you can get involved in too, is there is an art club if you're interested in that. Um, but outside of organizations here at MSC Billings, we do pride ourselves in having a lot of different support channels for you. Um, so once you've applied here, we will have an orientation for you, whether you're starting in spring or fall. Uh, we call it Yellow Jacket Orientation. And you'll get familiar with some of the services and different organizations here on campus. Uh, you'll get to meet some faculty, fellow students, all of that jazz. Um, and from there, you'll flow into your first year experience here, which is a class we hold for our freshmen just to introduce them to kind of campus life, um, give them an outlook on careers and such. We also have an academic support center, um, TRIO, student support services, disability support services, lots of great things that our students can utilize. Um, today though, we did want to visit a little bit about our career and employment services here on campus, and those are set up to help our current students as well as graduated students, um, alumni, um, find jobs, kind of see what the job outlook is in their area. So we had our director, Kristen Peterman, um, sit down down with one of the career advisors, uh, Juanita, and we would love to share some of Juanita's wisdom with you. All right, awesome. Thanks everyone. Kristen Peterman, Director of New Student Services, and I'm here with Juanita today. Juanita, will you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do on campus? Yeah, um, I'm Juanita Hooper, and I'm 
currently employed with the Career Services, Career and Employment Services, and I'm a career specialist in that capacity. Um, and prior to that, I was an advisor and a career specialist, so uh, kind of have that background with it also. Awesome. So uh, before we jump into this, a few questions I have for you today. Tell us a little bit about what does Career and Employment Services do and how can it benefit students? Okay, the Career and Employment Services is really expanded. We do resumes, we do employment uh, preparation, uh, interviews, mock interviews, but probably the, one of the biggest things we do is we, we compile grad data so students have a road map in regards to majors and what kinds of jobs they can get with those majors. And, um, and so, the, with the end goal being employment. Awesome. You know, we want employment related to their majors. Yeah, great. So you talked a little bit about grad data. So tell me, based on some of that grad data and things that you guys collect, and we're talking a little bit about social sciences today, um, what, what percentage of students are placed in employment? When we do the grad data, it's every January, February we follow up like we right now we had followed up last year with our 2019 graduates by majors. And so we know the number of graduates, we make phone calls and we obtain information in regards to what kinds of jobs they got, who hired them. And so we, we end up with 100% most likely in regards to our responses and those that we contacted were employed. Wow. Uh, so the grad data really helps follow up with That's them. That's amazing. So yeah. close to 100% employment placement. Yes, yes. Great. Well, excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. I hope that some of the folks joining us today will take advantage of your expertise and um, we can help connect them with you. Yes, and we're located and it's called Library 100 and it's Career and Employment Services. Wonderful. And we'll link Thanks. all of that information for everyone to see. So. Yes. Excellent. Thanks, okay. Juanita. Thank you. Because I think sometimes um, with college you get really focused on classes and some of those things, and um, which is all very important, but sometimes it, it's harder to see the big picture. And so our career services office is so helpful in helping to look and think about the big picture, um, kind of moving things forward. Um, I just wanted to remind us really quick of some important dates. Um, we do have the uh, FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid is live right now and the priority deadline for that is December 1st. Um, you can submit that free application. Um, you would use the, you can check out our website, it'll get you to the right place, but you'll want to use fafsa.gov, I believe. Um, and our MSUB code is 002530. Um, we may be including more of this information on this slide later. I just wanted to say it before uh, we got too far. Um, and then also our scholarship application is open. So, um, and that the priority deadline is February 1st. Um, and so those are just some opportunities if you're thinking about like, this is great, like you're talking about all these career opportunities, but I'm still struggling with like, how the heck am I gonna pay for school? We just want you to know that we're here to support you with that as well. Um, and so then I'll kick it over to Shai. I think she's gonna talk a little bit about some of those um, job outcomes that Juanita was referencing a little bit earlier. Yeah, um, so MSU Billings, you come here, great, you graduate with a degree maybe in one of our social sciences programs. Um, what exactly does the outlook look on that? Um, so actually MSU Billings will uh, was part of a Department of Labor and Industry report that found that our graduates actually earn about 4,500 more than the medium median excuse me, across all four-year colleges here in the state of Montana. Um, and our graduates typically earn more than graduates in the same program at another college as well. And 80% of the bachelor's degree programs offered at MSU Billings have higher wages in the same program at another college. So we didn't really touch on it, but our uh, tuition is a pretty low number. Um, we like to say we have a public college feel at a, no, private college feel, see I'm not looking at it, private college feel at a public college price. Um, so we do have those smaller classes that we had mentioned earlier. Um, so you're paying less, but you're getting more out of it on the back end. And as we mentioned, um, our social sciences are great, um, very active here in our campus. I am a graduate uh, English along with that history minor and felt very prepared to leave here and go off into the workforce. So from an alumni perspective, it was definitely worth it. Sweet. So um, 
next steps, where do you go from here? Um, again, if you have any questions, you can throw those in the chat, whether you click on the chat icon or type something in a comments box. Um, just depends on how you're watching it with us today. Um, but you can come visit. We love to have students here on campus. We're, do, we're taking all the precautions, keeping everybody safe. Um, and so you have this really um, private experience even where you have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with one of our new student specialists and then possibly a current student or possibly the new student specialist will take you around on a tour, show you campus. Um, you'll get to see one of the residence hall rooms and some of the classrooms and things, just places where you can kind of picture yourself. We'll point out career services so you know where they are located in the lower level of the library. Um, but then also, if you haven't already done so, apply for admission. Um, and then if you have and you've been accepted and that's part of why you're here, that's awesome. Congratulations, we're so excited. Um, can't wait to have you join us in the fall. Um, but just wanna remind you, we do have a couple things. Like I mentioned before, completing your FAFSA. Again, the priority deadline is December 1st. If that date has passed, that is okay. You'll still be able to get, um, get that in and still have access to some funds. Um, and then completing your scholarship application application and then uh, if you have questions again about anything please uh, pop those in the chat now or feel free to reach out to us later but that's kind of what I have anything to say to close Shiloh um hey, cheers. yeah cheers <laughs> woohoo um yes no just yeah feel free to reach out to us um we do have a Starbucks on our campus Singer's Bistro as well as a Jamba Juice and the only one in Montana, the only one in Montana mm -hmm. and a Jasmine's coffee shop as well mm -hmm. so um stop by see us visit with us and if you joined us on Conduit um you'll be getting a gift card from us soon